Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today I'm going to be reacting to Tottenham's dramatic 2-1 win over Brighton and Hove Albion in the Premier League. But before we get into this one, if you are new to the channel, why don't you leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs and hit that notification bell because it will let you know when I've gone live. And also in the link in the description down below, you can become a member of Sunny Talk Spurs for just 99p a month and get exclusive access to my podcast, Nice One Sunny. Get your questions down below for this week's podcast but without further ado let's get in to the video and sadly I couldn't do a reaction video straight after the game yesterday as I was out for a family meal but you've got it you've got it today you've got it today I've uh, you know delayed it a day but I wanted to get into the nitty gritty because I was just in utter shock straight away after the game I was in utter shock I just I didn't know how to react after Brennan Johnson's goal I was a bit perplexed I was like where's this come from <laughs> you know I mean Tottenham at the moment we've been used to you know the last couple of years we've been used to late goals scoring and conceding but finally again we've been on the scoring end of one you know the relentlessness of Angeball didn't give up yesterday the Tottenham fans cheering on to the bitter end that's what we need that's what we need to get top four this season just the fan base backing the team at home games and away, don't get me wrong, you know, the away support from Tottenham fans is also fantastic. I think we have some of the best travelling fans in the Premier League in English football. But at home, you've got to take it to that next level when we're at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But going all the way forward to the start of the game, I thought we started a bit weirdly. I thought we started a bit weirdly. I, I couldn't get my head round. Um, it was just a bit slow, wasn't it? It was just a bit like wasn't all clicking in certain areas. That's what I think I'm getting at. Um, some of the passing and moving and the mistakes. I think it's some of the most mistakes I've seen from us playing out the back from Vicario a few times. Obviously, the, the penalty came from a mistake. There was a few times where I thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not used to... Usually when we turn over the ball, we're quite good at it. But Brighton, I mean, fair play to Brighton. They know how to play their style of football and to, you know... They play similar and their press is similar. So maybe that's what it was down to. But looking at the stats, I mean, they they had six shots, three on target, 47% possession, which feels quite low for Brighton because we had 16 and six shots on target, 53% possession. So I don't know. I feel like it, the end result was deserved for Spurs, but... People say, oh, Bright Brighton did have their chances. You know, the World Bit one. I mean, Vicario made two amazing saves. And then also on the flip side, you know, I think I think Jason still made some good saves. We didn't put away our chances. Madison had that, you know, long-range effort. There was a few efforts from us where I thought we should put it to bed. It was one of the most frustrating Tottenham games. I was watching it. Just sometimes I was watching it standing up at stages, just like feeling like a manager on the touchline, like kicking, like you know, thin air and stuff like that. I just was pulling my hair out how we were not putting away these chances. You know, there was the one where Richardson was one on one, and I think, you know, that's the finish he sort of sometimes doesn't perfect. He's so good at the first time drill across the box. Last week he scored a curling effort, but those sort of when he's through one on one and has time to think about it, those are the ones where I'm like. Should we get a new striker? But that's a question for the comments down below. But now getting into the goals. Um, the penalty. I don't know what Benzacore was really thinking. Uh, playing it out like that. Dribbling through men when uh, he sort of had options and reason to sort of, you know, get rid of it early. So, get loses the ball. And then Mickey van der Ven sticks a leg out. You know, he can't help that. But it was a penalty. But that's that. And then our equaliser, obviously from Papa Matasar, who personally I think was man of the match. He was immense. You know, having him return from the beginning, because uh, obviously he played in the Everton game, but he didn't feature um, until late in the second half. But having him from the beginning was fantastic. He is such a good player. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the Premier League, midfielder in the Premier League, whatever you want to call it. I think he is fantastic. And, you know, amazing ball from Dejan Kulisevsky. Um and, you know, a bit of luck, obviously, but he made his own luck. I think he did the right thing trying to square it, but hits the post. I thought when he hit the post, I was like, oh, here we go. And then it went in. And then the winner. <laughs> when Hoybeer scored that chance, I thought, that was it. And then I thought, you know, it's Brighton. I know we're at home, but I'll take a draw. And then 
Ronan Johnson right at the end, and Son. That's the difference with Son. I did a video yesterday of how important the return of Son and Basuma will be for Tottenham. Son's clinical cross, something Werner wasn't able to do in the game. You know, Werner's crosses were hitting the first man, going over, all that sort of stuff. But Son's cross finds Brennan Johnson and we score in the 90th sixth minute to give us flashbacks to that Sheffield United win in the Premier League. It was fantastic. Such a good result. And, you know, like the title, such an important result. You know, we're looking to get top four football. Um, and this will just, like, propel us, hopefully, up the table and just get us where we need to be and where we want to be. You know, we want to finish in the top four this season. I did a video with lots of different YouTubers giving their top four predictions saying how we need to finish above Villa and Man United. Obviously, they play uh, when this is recorded. They haven't played yet, but, you know, a draw between those two teams would be fantastic to help us even more. But, you know, changing one point into two points, just imagine if we'd beat Everton. We would have been very, very clear. But it's the way of the warrior, isn't it? Um, but I'm well, very happy with that result. This is just such an important game. Uh, I, I, I think we've just got to put into perspective points will get us to where we want to be. And there's still stuff to work on. You know, I'm, I mean, by the sounds of it, Ange Postacoglu stuck a rocket up the players' backside at half time. They needed a bit of GM. But, you know, our bench yesterday was better. Our squad's back together. Our starting uh, 11 stronger. You know, it's still stuff to click. I'm saying about mistakes and stuff, but it's still all clicking. You know, and to beat a team like Brighton, who play that intense pressing, uh, their passing is immaculate. You know, it, it is very, very, um, you know, very, very important. It's very, very key to get these sort of victories over the line. So, yeah, I mean, and then to, you know, get, you know, the subs linking up and scoring and assisting, that's just what you really need. You know, even like Basuma came on and I thought was very, very impressive. But even like this, a lot of people were like, oh, Adogi hasn't had the best game. Poro hasn't had the best game. And I'm thinking that's the level of standard we're at now where players have an average game or just go under the radar a little bit and we're like questioning them. But no, nah, it was a team effort yesterday. We went to the bitter end and that's what Ange, Ange Ball is. So yeah, very, very happy with that. Um we roll on next week. I think we're playing Wolves, who lost to Brentford. So you hope at home that will be another three points and we can get some revenge against Wolves after that dramatic, you know, a dramatic loss that was. Uh, we had a dramatic win yesterday and against Wolves earlier in the season, we had a dramatic loss. But let me know in the comments down below, what do you make of the game? How important is that result for Tottenham season? Will that change the tide? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, and also, as I say, if you have enjoyed it, leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs, and hit that notification bell because it will let you know when I've gone live. And also, link in the description down below to become a member on the channel and get exclusive access to my podcast. Leave your questions for this week's episode. But until next time, and I'll tell you now, I've got a very special video coming tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. But until then, I'll see you on the next one. No, no, ciao.